Welcome back to Let's Clean Power Wash Simulator. I'm Burning Dog Face. And I'm in a box. On a side note, I really like how the air vents in this box are shaped like cathedral windows. <laughs> Shout out to Derek Floyd, who says, When the Aeldari Empire was at its height, some factions decided they didn't like all the hedonism and depravity and departed for the edges of the galaxy, becoming the pseudo-Amish Exodites. It's a grave injustice that Games Workshop hasn't made the Exodites a playable faction. What part of Space Elf Dinosaur Cavalry isn't awesome? And I gotta say, I had no idea that there were feral elves. <laughs> yeah, they call orcs who don't use uh, technology feral orcs in this setting. Planets where they just left them behind or whatever. But yeah, Space Elf Dinosaur Cavalry, I'm on board. Shortly before the fall, a second exodus occurred, this time on massive craft worlds. Some of them managed to get far enough away before Slanesh was born, and they constitute the majority of Eldari that roam the galaxy. Outcasts from the craft worlds often turn to piracy, becoming corsairs that plague Imperial shipping routes. The Dark Eldar were not called that until Millennium 32, when Asdrubael Vect rose to power in the dark city of Kamora. They managed to appease Slanesh by feeding it pain. As a result, the Drukhari are masters of torture. I don't know if it was from an official source, but I recall hearing about one victim that they took apart and hung from hooks, turning him into a gory chandelier. He was still alive. Oh god. The newest faction are called the Inari. Y-N-N-A-R-I. They're trying to empower a new Eldari god, Inead, Y-N-N-E-A-D, to oppose Slanesh, who is concerned enough about their efforts that it is actively opposing them. Hmm. I suppose any enemy of that thing. Oh, no, wait, Eldar god, not a friend of mine either, huh? So the exhaust is a totally different piece. I should focus on this over here. I'm suddenly reminded for no particular reason. See, I was thinking to myself, Wondering if the Space Marines any ever had a chapter that was done up in, like, really, really loud and obnoxious colors. Like some crazy neon shit like you'd see in the early 90s. And, uh, I suddenly remembered... You know, unrelated, but... They did a line of Transformers, uh, toys at one point. It just had the fucking craziest color schemes, like wildly clashing with each other. Actually, that kind of reminded me of the like early 2000s period when LOL Random was super popular. And so was combining random colors to make extremely uh, unique appearances. But, uh... The reason I bring that up is because this line of crazy colored uh, Transformers toys were officially uh, soldiers returning from serving on whatever planet where the biosphere was so fucking crazy that those colors were natural camouflage. <laughs> I absolutely really like the idea. Do not go to this planet. It is, not, it is too silly to be grimdark. <laughs> we can never go there. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, there's a ladder here. I was really confused for a second there. Hmm. Oh. Ow. 
as Drew Bayel. That's a great name. Like Mondo Villainous right there. The feck. Stay enough, my feet would catch something of these like greebles down here, and I would jump up. All right, filth, where are you hiding? Come out, come out, wherever you are. The machine is immortal. Remember, I've got all the patience in the universe for this. Oh shit, this bit here. Fuck, I remember that fucked me up the first time, too. God damn it. Sticking out of the side. No. Oh god, oh, I'm stuck. That was alarming, because in 40k, they would absolutely leave me there. <laughs> if it was, uh, more efficient than not. Ah, fuck, I keep catching everything today. I was really good about that last time. I should be quite proud of myself. Yes! Main wing engine cleaned. Pelvic thrust. There's no button for that. <laughs> I also feel like even if they don't have any memory of our culture, pelvic thrusting totally exists in the 41st millennium just because that's the way humans are. <laughs> yes, yeah, got the, uh, the exhaust over here. Or we could just break it off and make it really loud. That would be... Actually, that would be terrible. I was thinking to myself, you know, if you could fit the other factions in this. The Tyranids don't have anything to wash or to wash with, so they're out. They don't really care about anything that isn't made of meat. I feel like the same applies to the Necrons more because they don't, they don't have anything to wash. I mean, they don't even sweat or have, you know, skin flakes coming off of them. Actually, now that I think about it, given that their MO is burying themselves in tombs for thousands of years at a stretch, uh, they probably have some kind of nano machines keeping everything tidy. I did, however, have the thought that you might actually be able to pull it off with the orcs, except for the fact that the orcs don't care if anything is dirty. No 
did occur to me that, uh... You know, I'm, I'm very impressed how little they have changed the rules of, uh, Tabletop... Tabletop Simulator? No, Power Wash Simulator. At least it's closer than the Powerpuff Girls. The... Uh, yeah, they changed the rule. They changed the rules very little. You know, it plays pretty much exactly like it does in the main game. It's just all 40k. -y. And uh, so I was thinking, maybe that doesn't work for the orcs because you'd in inevitably be a Gretchen. There are, uh, you know, Grots, Gretchen, Goblins, whatever you want to call them. Not all Greenskins are born alike. Yeah, they literally grow from the same, uh, fungus that makes orcs. It'll just spit out an entire encampment if you give it long enough. But, uh... Yeah, they probably wouldn't let you be a Gretchen because you'd be, like, two and a half feet tall, and they would need to change a lot about your perspective and your jumping and everything. So then I was thinking... <laughs> Maybe you could make one of the, make the player one of those humans who paints themselves green and uh, tries to join an orc tribe, and they often let them because they're violent, because they're crazy, and they find that very funny. Well, they find the idea of an orky human to be hilarious to begin with, so that's probably the entire reason they lived long enough to make their pitch. I believe they're called Digga Knobs. Sounds much ruder than it is, really. Maybe knobs is just one of the terms the orcs use to refer to themselves. I think they're bigger than boys. Boys probably spelled with a Z. Yes. I didn't think that was anywhere near close. That's really nice. And yes, I did say that because we're up to 69%. Uh, I am a child. Oh, right, change angles. Yes, yes, yes. Bitchin'. That's this whole engine from a start to finish. So that's rad. I've taken huge streaks off of this wing, so I might as well go there. Well, that was weird. The texture changed on that thing. I don't know how to do it. You can go back and see for yourself. Excellent! The attack wing can clamp away. What is this? Grime, salt deposits, it's salt. Actually, yeah, were they flying through the fucking ocean to get this much salt on them? We took a shortcut through a gaming forum. It was saltier than we expected. Five Battle Brothers died of the salinity. You 
I haven't even gotten into the popular stuff, like how all the orcs are psychic. And anything enough orcs believe becomes true. Which is why, you know, they believe that if you paint your vehicle red, it goes faster. So it does. Period. <laughs> you know, there's a space marine who has been specifically assigned to fighting orcs for the last, like, 5,000 years because the orcs are convinced that this motherfucker can't be killed, which means when he's fighting orcs, he's invulnerable. You know, it doesn't make him godlike. It doesn't, you know, turn him into a perpetual or anything. And if you were to go fight, say, Chaos, he'd probably get his ass kicked because he'd been used to not getting, uh, worrying about dying for all these years. You know, I don't know, he'd probably do better than that. He's a fucking space marine. But still, you get the idea. He doesn't have that guarantee when he's fighting anyone else. Actually, my favorite thing of all about the orcs is that their technology makes no sense. Like, I believe the idea is that their technology only works because, again, they believe it does. You know, like, if we, you know, if the, the humans beat a bunch of orcs and capture one of their vehicles, it's just a bunch of random parts thrown together. <laughs> See, we have just had a sliver on it. Uh, suspicious. My personal favorite one was, uh, yeah, their weapons won't fire, uh, their, uh, their ships my favorite detail, it, uh, aren't even airtight. There is no way that their technology should work except that they're convinced that it does. You know, they have orcs called mech boys who are born with a strange innate knowledge of all their orc technology, but they're still basically just throwing scrap metal together. the mech boys who, uh, famously said, uh, there is no such thing as too much DACA, which is what they called, you know, machine gun fire. But yeah, like I said, it would be funny to be playing as a Digga knob, but... I can't imagine the orcs actually giving a shit about whether or not something is clean. Eldar maybe, but they're a serious lack of fun. Yeah, my impression of the Eldar is that they're the one race with common fucking sense, but, uh... They're so, uh, self-absorbed and arrogant that it, that, uh, it bites them in the ass every time.
was. That was kind of a pain in the ass, wasn't it? heavy bolters. Ah, uh, so much yellow. I'm just gonna head up there because it looks much better from up here. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm Burning Dog Face. And I will see you on the next episode of Let's Clean Power Wash Simulator. I'm gonna keep working on this wing. And, uh. Well, we get closer and closer to the goal. Later!